All right, y'all. Hey, this is Alexis, Sophia Leather. All right, so I've been wanting to make this video for a long time. It's basically how to saddle stitch. And I'm gonna be teaching you a shortcut method of understanding uh, the relationship, how to actually thread the needle, where the needle placement goes. But I want you to watch the videos down below in the description. Uh, it's from Armitage Leather. He has two videos. There's a saddle stitch in detail and another saddle stitch video. They're kind of lengthy, but that's basically how I learned how to do it. So I'm not gonna go over everything he went over, but please watch that because that's basically the nuts and bolts of how to saddle stitch. What I'm gonna show you in this video is a quick and dirty way of remembering basically what he taught um, and the way I do it. So it might be kind of long, I don't know. The video might be long, to be honest with you. So first things first, we're going to go over the tools needed. So let's go do that real quick and let me change the camera angle. All right. All right, obviously you need thread. Um, I have a video in my playlist, you know, Leather Crafting Tips, check that video out on all this information on this Ritz of Tiger Thread. I'm using a stitching iron called KNS Blade. You can use whatever you want. Um, I'm using five stitches per inch. That's the, the uh, stitching irons that I'm using, KNS Blade, five stitches per inch. You need your John James harness needles. I'll put a link in the description uh, where you can find these. Like I said, I'm not affiliated, but this is where you can find them. And uh, this is on Rocky Mountain, actually. And what they have there is the size needle you need for the size thickness of thread, So, which is really, really a great resource. So I'll put that link in there as well. Next, you need a pair of needle nose pliers. All right, you get these at Lowe's. But the issue is I don't want the, the pliers to maul the, uh, the needle. So you dip that into something like this called Tool Magic. And that's how you get this kind of rubber stuff here. This is, I think, Hobby Lobby or Michaels. I don't know exactly where you get this. Amazon Tool Magic. And you just dip your tool in there and let it dry overnight. And it gives you that protective coating. So you have that. And a pair of nippers. You get this anywhere. Nippers. I don't know. Thread nippers. And that's it. Um, yeah, I forgot to mention, you need uh, wing dividers. You get these all day on Amazon or wherever. Just a pair of wing dividers. All right. So first thing I'm gonna do is mark where I'm gonna stitch. And everybody does this a little bit different. Yeah, everybody does this a little bit different. I like 3 16 off the edge. All right, so take your wing dividers, mark 3 16. And I'm just gonna just go across the edge here like this on both sides, because we're gonna use this as a sample piece. All right, we're gonna use it as a sample piece to go over a couple different things. So now what I wanna show you is now for this Explanation, we're gonna be punching all the way through the two pieces of leather, okay? The two pieces of leather. Now for all intents and purposes, for the future of this video, the top piece that, that you're gonna see that's on the outside that your customers are gonna see, that's the good side, and the back side is called the bad side. So you have your good side, and you have your bad side. So we're punching through the good side, obviously, and we're gonna be punching all the way through both layers. All right, I just broke it up because there's gonna be different examples here of what we're gonna be doing here. All right, so if you notice my thread, if you notice my thread, some guys mark their line and then they straddle the line and punch their holes, straddling the line like that. I typically do it like this, where I put the, the top of the stitch right on the bottom of the line. So I guess I should have put that, um, yeah, this is a strap. This is the top of the strap like this. So I always do, I always do it this way. I don't know why. Um, it's just the way I do it, so take that for what it's worth, whatever. All right, so I'm gonna get some thread here. If you guys wanna know exactly how to thread the needle and also how much thread, check out that playlist. Okay. Oh, leather crafting playlist down there. I have, I have all this stuff on there. But I was gonna cut out enough for one, two, three, four, five different samples here. So let me cut out five and thread them up, and then we can get started. Oh, also, these uh, clamps, Leather Crafting Tips playlist, I have, I have uh, 
a video on these stitching ponies, which are absolutely amazing, by the way. All right, let me do this, and then uh, we'll start stitching, and I'll show you, and I will stop wasting your time. All right, so I have my needles threaded and um, ready to go. So remember, this is a good side, that's a bad side. We're gonna put the bad side uh, towards my right. Now this doesn't matter in the end, um, but this is how I do it and I'll explain why here in a second. But we're gonna put the good side towards my right and the bad side towards the left. And we're gonna start with understanding the relationships of the holes and the thread, that's what's important. So let me change the camera angle and go over exactly what I'm talking about here. First thing you wanna do is put on some latex gloves. Latex gloves doesn't really help your, uh, protect your hands, but what it does do is that it helps grab the needle. So that's a quick little tip there. Latex gloves helps grab the needle so it's not so slippery. And you wanna take your first needle Put it through the hole, and then you want to find the middle. All right, bring it out till you find the middle, and then we're going to start. So I'm going to go left hand, left hand needle through the hole, and you notice that the top of the hole is away from me, and the bottom of the hole is towards me. So here's a trick. The second needle needs to go towards the top of the hole. You see how this hole is on that side this needle needs to go on the side of the top of the hole. On the side of the top of the hole. Move this out of the way, rotate it, put it through the bottom of the hole, and pull it out. That is a saddle stitch. So let's go over that one more time. Left hand needle goes through. You notice that the top of the hole is away from me and the bottom of the hole is towards me. Pull this left hand needle through. The right hand needle goes behind the first needle, which is basically on the side of the top of the hole. So wherever the top of the hole is at, this second needle goes towards that side. You noticed? It goes towards, not over here, but over here, towards the top of the hole. Push this out of the way, rotate, put that towards the bottom, and pull through. Now let's look at it from the top view. Here we go, left hand needle through the hole, through the back, or the bad side, pull it out, right hand needle towards the top of the hole, right here, push this out of the way, rotate it, put that second needle through the bottom of the hole, and pull through, and that is a saddle stitch. Yeah, I'm recording, oh, let me jump down, oh, almost fell. All right, this is the same thing, we have the good side on my right, and the bad side on my left, Left hand goes through the hole, pull it out. Right needle, right hand goes towards the top of the hole, which is behind this needle. Pull this out of the way, rotate it, right? Rotate it so you can put that second needle through the bottom of the hole, pull it out, and stitch. Let's do that one more time without me talking. Should I talk? Okay, I'll talk. Left hand needle through the hole, pull it out, right, the second needle needs to go towards the top of the hole, so which means behind. So this is towards the top, this is towards the bottom. Towards the top, this will be towards the top because the top is on this side, and then the bottom is on this side of this needle, right? So we're going towards the top of the hole, which is on this side of this needle. Push that out of the way, rotate it, put that second needle through the bottom, and pull out. Now let's take a look at this thread and we'll move on to the next example. All right, so this is what it looks like with the good side towards the right and you're coming in left hand first, which is coming through the back side. So this is what it basically looks like when you're coming through the, the, the bad side first. When you're coming through the bad side first, this is what it looks like. And this is the back. This is the bad side. So remember, we came through, we came through the back side first, or the bad side. Remember, that was the left hand? We did left hand through here. So if you notice that this looks a little flat, and this tends to be the problem when you, when you uh, on the side that you go through first. So on this next run, right here, we're going to rotate this. 
we're going to basically put the bad side on the right and the good side on the on the left and we're going to see the difference basically the good the bad side is going to look like that and the good side is, is going to look like that you'll see what i'm talking about let me show you all right so we inverted it and we basically put the good side on the left and the bad side on the right so we're going to go ahead and weave our thread the same find the middle find the middle come together and we're going to do the same thing okay we're going to go left hand first and let me change camera so you can see the difference here all right so i don't know if you can tell but since this is inverted the angles are this way so the top of the hole is towards me so we're going to follow that same rule meaning the second needle needs to be towards the top of the hole second needle towards the top of the hole all right so notice the top of the hole is on this side so towards the top of the hole meaning on this side of this needle so you grab that flip it and put that through the top there and weave it closed okay now if you notice look what happens look towards the top of the hole you're going to have this back side being a little nicer than the front or the good side so you can use this to your advantage is knowing where that second needle goes knowing where that second needle goes so rule of thumb whatever needle you go through first whatever side you go through first is going to lay a little more flat the second needle side is going to be more pronounced you can use that to your advantage how you like but don't forget that the hole is the hole is lined up this way because it's reversed meaning the second needle needs to be towards the top of that second needle towards the top of the hole right not towards the bottom towards the top then you rotate it stick that second needle through the top there pull it out and uh we got one more hole let's do a top view all right hold on i gotta jump down we got one more here hole here okay here we go left hand needle now the the hole is towards the top the top of the hole is towards me so i'm going to take this needle put it towards that side towards the top of the hole move this out of the way take that very same needle rotate it and put it through the top of the hole here and pull it out now let's pull this out so you can see the difference so the bad side was towards the right and the good side was towards the left on that last stitch look at the difference we essentially did the same thing we followed that rule of thumb meaning the second needle goes towards the, the side of the top of the hole but look at the difference all right this one the good side was on the right or on the second needle side this one the back was on the second needle side meaning the right side all right now what we're going to do is how do you remedy that how do you make both sides look like that and that is my friends the loop over stitch that forces that angle we're going to do that next but before we do let's talk about the direction i was no i was going from here down we're going to go from backwards work away from us and i'm going to show you the difference uh, if you know this simple technique of second needle towards the top of the hole all right let's do that next all right just to sh prove to you that my technique is the best ever since sliced bread we're going to work backwards we're not going to go from the top down we're going to work away from us this is the same as me sitting on this side and working towards myself or sitting where i'm at and working away from me it doesn't matter we're going to go backwards as long as you follow the simple rule of what second needle goes towards the top of the hole so the top of the hole is away from me so i'm gonna take this second needle towards the top of the hole bring it back ring it in and pull it out and what you have is the same stitch this works out perfect when you are in a crazy little angle and you can't really hold your bag a certain way and uh yeah that's what happens and you have to stitch away from you somehow you know secret trick is oh which way where's the top of the hole the top of the hole is away from me so let me pick my second needle towards the top of the hole which is away from this needle and then 
rotate it, put it towards the top of the hole. So that is the trick that I use, and I still do it to this day. Depending on which way I'm running, I'm like, okay, second needle needs to be towards the top of the hole. And it doesn't matter which way you're running your stitch, as long as that second needle is towards the top of the hole. What we have to do now is focus on getting the back or the, um, the back side nice and tidy and make it still angled. So don't forget, the second, the second needle side typically has a nicer stitch, but we're gonna fix that with the overhand knot. Let's do that next. Alrighty, so we're gonna do this the way I actually do my, all my stuff. I do it like this with the good side on my right, with the top of the hole facing away from me, and this is punched all the way through, so I always typically do it, this is how I actually stitch all my stuff, you see me in my videos. Like this, left hand goes through, second needle goes towards the top of the hole, and we're gonna put it in, but before we do, we're going to create an overhand stitch to make the back angled like the front. Okay, so let's turn the camera and show you what I do next. Let me do that one again, um, because, because it's gonna be confusing. I lost my hand placement. All right, we find the middle, left hand through, cross, right hand needle towards the top of the hole, bring it through. Now I'm not gonna do anything except tighten it up first, because I wanna show you what happens here. Okay, so right now, if you look at this, we have a small little loop right here. And if you notice right here where the thread is coming out, this needle or this thread is not going through any side of this loop. It's opposite or it's working independent of this loop. It's not going through the top, it's not going through the bottom, it's not doing anything. It's just not, I'm not using this loop at all. This is where you overhand cast. And what you wanna do is you notice that the bottom of, we're working towards the bottom of the hole. In other words, this thread needs to come out the bottom of the hole. So it needs to come out the bottom of every hole. So the way you do that is you want it to come out of the bottom of this loop. So how do you do that? You run this through here like this. You notice that now this thread is literally coming out of the bottom of the loop. You see this loop? It's coming out the bottom of the loop versus coming out the top of the loop. This is coming out the top of the loop. You don't want that. You don't want it coming out the top of the loop. You want it coming out of the bottom of the loop, going through and coming out the bottom because we're going to the bottom of that hole. So coming through the bottom, and look what happens. As I tighten, you see how it's coming through the bottom of that hole, that loop? It's coming through the bottom of that loop. So look what happens, it forces that nice beautiful angle on that side, as well as keeping it the other side. Let me do that fast motion, or a little bit slower, and the way you do that is, everything's the same on the right side, you come in, this is what I do, you cast over this way. Casting over that way is putting this needle essentially through the bottom of the loop. If you were to go this way, you're coming out of the top of the loop, but you wanna be working towards the bottom, you want it to come out the bottom of the hole, because you're working towards the bottom. So. Cast that way, it comes out the bottom of the loop. You see that? This is how I do it. Left hand, cast over, and it's coming out of the bottom of the loop. And you're, what it does is creates that beautiful angle on both sides. Let's change the angle so I can show you from the top. Let me do, yeah, let me show you the top, hold on. Left hand through. Right hand towards the top of the hole, because we're on this side. Push that through the bottom, and we're gonna cast over so that we're coming through the bottom of the loop. That way. Same thing. Left hand through. Right hand needle towards the top of the hole, which is behind this needle. Pull it through. Cast over. Pull it through. Left hand needle. Right needle towards the top of the hole because on this side of the leather, the hole's on the top away from me. So that side, pull it through, go towards the bottom here, cast over. The cast over, you just technically bring in the loop towards, you come, you're coming out of the bottom of that loop. So let's pull this out and I'll show you what this looks like both sides. Yep, that's the back. Look how nice that cast over stitch, what that does in comparison 
to that one. So this is the same as this one, but we just added that loop, that cast over. And look at the cast over in the bottom here. And look at the, the front, you see? So now <laughs> we're gonna do the same thing, but we're gonna make it more complicated. And we're gonna put the, we're gonna put the bat side on the right and do the loop over cast. Let's try that. So we're gonna make this a little complicated. We're putting the bat side on the right and the good side on the left, meaning that the top of the hole is towards me. So we're gonna work, we're gonna make it even more complicated. We're gonna work, yeah, we'll, we'll do it towards me. So we're gonna go top here, find the middle. And let's see if we can figure this out. Left hand needle first. Now this, this needle needs to be towards the top of the hole, right? So top of the hole, which is towards me. Put this over here and we're gonna change angles so you can see what I do here. So now, oops, if we're looking at this, this needle needs to be coming toward, out of the top of this loop, right? Because we're working towards the top of the hole. We're working towards the top of the hole. So it needs to come out the top of the loop. So how do we do that? Is it this way? It's not, it'll be coming out of the bottom of the loop. So it needs to be this way. Now it's coming out of the top of the loop. Let's double check. Yeah, see it's coming out of the top of the loop there. You see that? And there we go. Oh, all right, hold on. You gotta jump there. All right, so we have the bad side on the right, the good side on the left. We're doing a cast over and left hand needle here. Now this side, you have the top of the hole towards me because it's inverted, right? The top of the hole's towards me, so I'm gonna take this right needle, put it on this side of the needle, which is towards me, the top of the hole. Push this through and the top, I'm working towards the top of the hole, so I want this loop, I want this thread to come out of the top of the, the top of this loop. So I have to cast over this way. See that? Does that make sense? So it doesn't matter the orientation, what side of your piece, what side of the piece you have it in your vise, um, what hand you go first, just remember the second needle goes towards the top of the hole, whatever side that's on. Then the cast over, you have to go out of that loop depending on which direction your hole's at. If you're working towards the top, it needs to come out of the top of the loop. If it's, you're working towards the bottom, then you come out of the bottom of the loop. And uh, that's basically will solve all your, your problems when it comes to stitching it the right way. It'll fix all those inconsistencies and uh, yeah, so sometimes I still have to double check and look to make sure I'm doing it right. So at this point, it's up to you how you want to stitch, what orientation. But just knowing these quick ones, uh, this quick method, you can do it any way, shape or form. Let's give you a mustache shot. All right, so there's that. So as you can see, it doesn't really matter which orientation, as long as you understand. That one looks a little sloppy right there. I think I, I, think I goofed up right there, to be honest with you. Look at that. That's bothering me. I'm gonna leave it in the video, but I think I goofed up there. Or it could just be the hole. Oh, wow, that was actually a lot longer than I thought. I apologize. But that's basically how you stitch, saddle stitch. Um, and it's basically just knowing that one cool little trick. And you can kind of do it whichever way, left hand, right hand, this way, that way, that way, this way, this way, mule kick. So, but there is one more, before you leave, one more way of saddle stitching. And this is the preferred method of getting a perfect, beautiful stitch on both sides and without needing glue. This is how, how, actually, how I actually put together my minimalist card wallet and as well as how I put together my gusset on my, um, on my, my bags. So this is, glueless and essentially you're putting together, you're just lining up holes. You're punching one side, one piece of material, you're punching another piece of material. So you're gonna punch your holes here and you're gonna punch your holes here. Make sure you have the same amount of holes and you're gonna put them together, all right? But what's gonna happen is you're gonna have, you're gonna have opposing hoses. <laughs> versus you stitch here, you're gonna have your holes on the front like this, 
and on the back like this, because you're punching all the way through, your holes are going to be the same. When you have, when you punch here, then punch here and put them together, you're going to have opposing hoses. They're going to be like this, right? That's actually a good thing because the reason why you need that overhand stitch on something like this is because you're forcing it to go opposite its natural bent. The natural bent is perfect when you have opposing hoses, meaning you don't have to do an overhand stitch. So if you have opposing hoses, it's gonna wanna come out of the bottom on this way, and over here it's gonna wanna come out the top. You don't have to do an overhand stitch. Does that make any sense? I'll show you what I'm talking about, and uh, we'll do it right here. Which is gonna punch a couple of holes here. All right, let's get a nice straight edge here. This is not supposed to be super perfect, but I just wanted to show you how this works. So I'm gonna go ahead and run maybe 10 stitches. Ten holes, ten holes, and basically you're gonna match them up like this, right? Oh, I did it backwards. That was dumb. I should cut that off. I should have did it over there. But anyway, so if you notice, you have opposing hoses, right? Like that, and like that. They're not the same. They're opposing, which is great for st stitching. So let's put it together. You gotta line these up, the first hole and the first hole. And what I do is I usually just weave a thread through there, through the first hole and the second hole, and kind of manually hold it up. Now, this doesn't matter what side, there's no good side or bad side, because it's gonna be stitched the same. I don't know if you could understand that. The top of the hole is towards me over here, and if I flip it, the top of the hole is towards me over here. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter which way you do it. So we're gonna do it like this. We're gonna stick her in. And at this point, it is no different from anything else. No overhand stitch. You do, you do not need the overhand knot. Let's change the camera angle. Well, let's find the middle first. Let's punch you in the face. What happened? Hi. Hold on, I'm filming. You yeah. wanna say hi? You can yeah, say hi? hi. Hold on, left hand needle. You gotta find, once you find the first two, now the top of the hole's away from me. Second needle behind the first one. Run it through the bottom and find the, the back here. Run it through and it comes out perfect. Okay, let's do that again. And I'll show you a couple things you want to be careful of. This is no different. The top of the needle is away from me, so top of the needle away from me here. Behind this needle, run it through the bottom here, find that hole, and pull it out. And check this out. It's no different from anything else. Let me give you the top view. All right, let's look at that from the top. I hope this makes sense. I hope it makes sense, right? You don't, you don't have to, um, you don't have to, whatchamacallit, do overhand knot, because you don't need to. So the, need, the top of the hole is away from me, so the second needle goes behind the first one, towards the top of the hole, and then go weave it through there. Now here, what I do is to avoid, to avoid threading your needle, to avoid threading your thread, I do this every time, is that you take the tip, make sure the tip's out there, and you just pull this side a little bit. Because in the event that you actually, that you actually threaded this, let's say, hold on Eli. Let's say you thread it like that and it's stuck. See how it's threaded? Pull this out, it'll, un it'll unthread itself. Anyway, now just for demonstration purposes, let's flip this around. And this is gonna be a little complicated because we're going backwards and then the good side's on the right side. But just to prove to you, this technique still works. Left hand needle through. Now the top of the hole is away from me. Also, same thing. Top of the hole is away from me. So the second hand needle goes towards the top of the hole. You weave it through. And that'll give you literally the same stitch. Now, Let's change it up and go right hand needle first. Now this side, the top of the needle is towards me. So second needle goes towards me, right? Second hand needle goes towards, on this side of the needle because the top of the hole is there. Run it through the bottom. And this does not require any thread, uh, any loop cast over. And that yielded the same thing. You guys are lucky to have me as a teacher, even though I probably confuse you more than uh, Armitage Leather. 
mean, he taught me, so. Hey, I taught you nothing. I'm definitely lucky. I know how to stitch you with me. You know how to, you, I'm telling tell you what right now. Let me finish this, and then uh, I think we're done with the video. I hope that made sense, y'all. Well, let me finish this. I have to finish this. Look, this got stuck. So yep. I'm just pulling this thread and Pull. pulling the thread. So to me, the opposing hoses are perfect. Obviously, it's going to be really hard to do on a really long radio strap. So I really don't do this on big projects. I do this on like my minimalist card wallet. Also, my gussets on my um, bags. Um, yeah, that's how you do that. Let's go out to my outro. Let's go out to my outro. All right, bye. Oh, wow. I might have wasted your time. I'm not gonna lie. Um, if you guys like that stuff, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. But I do think that that was probably one of my worst how-tos. I mumbled and stumbled a lot. I tried to get it in my head out to video and it wasn't that good. However, I would tell you that Armitage Leather, uh, his video is amazing. So watch his stuff. And um, one thing it doesn't offer that, that I do better than him is give you 